Good morning, my friends. Mark Mulligan. Today I want to talk to you a little about some of the best golf instruction books you can buy. I noticed when I went online, uh, I was looking for, you know, the, the best instruction books that were ever made. And I didn't really find a lot on it, especially on YouTube. I saw some stuff for maybe five books or whatever, but uh, really no explanation of what the teachers taught and different things like that. And so I thought I'd go through it because I'll be frank with you, I've read every one of these books many, many times. I love the golf game. I tried to always find the secret, the secret of the game, you know, or the magic move, uh, all those kinds of terms. And um, so I just thought it'd be helpful for you to see what books out there helped influence my life and also I believe many pros and uh, I'm not going to uh, necessarily wait to the last uh, book to show you the best book ever written or the, probably the most sold book ever written but here it is right here and this is the five lessons uh, uh, the modern fundamentals of golf by Ben Hogan and I got hope I hope I can find a picture in here too so you could see what Ben was all about. But Ben Hogan, of course, played in the 40s and 50s. You probably remember him. He um, was, he got in a real bad car accident and they really wasn't even expected to live. But he ended up becoming one of the best golfers in the world. They, uh, to this day, they even talk about him having the most pure swing. Now, Ben, you know, of course, in those days, uh, the golf swing was a. They, they called it the modern swing, but the modern swing that we swing today is entirely different because of the technology and the strength of the players playing on the tour and everything. I mean, they're in such better condition and what have you. But Ben Hogan, he coined a lot of uh, terminology. And he one was called pronation and supination, and he was uh, really into kind of turning your hips and more of a body swinger than an arm swinger. But this book, I would highly recommend uh, you getting into your library. Many many people have started the game, even the the guys on the tour now, uh, Duffner. I mean, he is definitely a Hogan disciple, and there's many other. Even uh, Gordon's, I mean, Jordan Spieth loved Ben Hogan. Ben Hogan was from Texas, as is Jordan Spieth. So uh, you need to really read this book. It's phenomenal. It kind of gives you the basics, and uh, you can't go wrong with having this book in your library to learn about golf. Another book and a player from the older age, you know, in the 50s and 60s, was Sam Snead. And Sam Snead, also, this book is called How to Play Golf. Sam Snead. And again, it doesn't have a picture on the outside here, but Sam Snead had one of the silkiest, smoothest swings ever. And he won professional golf tournaments in his 60s. That's how supple he was and how beautiful his swing was. And this is another book that I'd highly recommend you getting. I mean, again, it's old school. It's uh, not as old as Bobby Jones, and I'm not recommending you get any Bobby Jones books to use for lessons because they used hickory shaft clubs. These guys all use steel shaft clubs, so you could swing the, the club pretty hard and hit into the ball. But Sam Snead, How to Play Golf, I'd highly recommend also this book. Another book that probably had the most influence on me, and probably most of you don't haven't uh, really known about it, is Peter Costas. Now, Peter Costas is a fabulous commentator on um, the Golf Channel and different uh, national tournaments. And he, in my mind, with his golf lessons, really talked about how the hands and the wrists and and the the swing is natural. 
it's not so manufactured. You know, Hogan, he broke his swing down into many different components, and uh, after a while, people will say you can have uh, paralysis through analysis, meaning you're breaking your swing down so much, pretty soon all your swing, thinking about are areas where you're going and, and you don't have a full swing. Well, Peter Costas talks about uh, four points on how to swing the club. Uh, a lot of it starts with the hands and the hands cock and then the shoulders pull around and it's just a beautiful book. Uh, I have his video also and almost all these books you can find a video on them. So again, I'd highly recommend you um, looking at The Inside Path to Better Golf by Peter Costas. It's a very, very good book. Another book that I really like, I mean, this book here, of course, Tiger has kind of lost his swing these days, but on, in this book, it's basically Butch Harmon is, has taught Tiger the game. And this is when Tiger did, was probably the most prolific with his swing. And he talks about the basics. It's a beautiful book, just great book. And um, so when you get this book, you're basically show, seeing how Butch Harmon thought that maybe uh, you should swing the, the ball and that kind of thing to the club. So it's Tiger Woods, How I Play Golf. You can get these books all day long on Amazon for five, six, seven, eight, ten bucks used. If you want them new, they're a little more expensive. But I, again, I'd say go to Amazon and look for these books because in their fulfillment program, that's how they um, uh, get people to send them used books and then you can get them cheap. Here's another couple books that you should have in your library, your golf library. It's Henry Pennick's Little Red Book. And Henry Pennick's, uh, this one is, If You Play Golf, You're My Friend. They call it the Little Green Book, too. Henry Pennick was a phenomenal golf instructor. He did it all his life. He taught uh, Mickey Wright and uh, Ben Crenshaw and Tom Kite. Uh, they loved him. He, I, I think he, he got out in his wheelchair. He was out there when he was like 100 years old, still giving the boys lessons. And his claim to fame, uh, he had a lot of one-liners, but one thing he always talked about was take dead aim. And what he meant by that is once you've gotten your lessons all out of the uh, way and once you get on the course, you set up to that ball and you pick a spot maybe a couple of feet in front of the, uh, the ball and aim the club at it. And that's all you think about is hitting that ball to that spot. Take dead aim. Don't think about should I cock my wrist, should I lag, should I turn. At that point, once you're on the course, you've done your work. So take dead aim is a huge nomenclature thing that he uh, has talked about. So I highly recommend that. Another book you should have in your library is Dave Peltz. And he is the short game guru. He's the short game Bible. He's written books all about probably shots from, in 100, from, from 100 yards in. And Phil Mickelson uses him as his guru. Almost all the pros use him. Now, Dave Peltz was an engineer, and he studied the game. I mean, he put data points together. I mean, it goes on and on. When you see him in there, he's got graphs, and he's got angles and all kinds of things that are pretty phenomenal. It's almost uh, a little bit too intellectual. But he talks about, you know, different wedges, what wedge you should have. I mean, if in this day and age what's going on is, uh, as I've told you before, most people probably carry four or five wedges, at least four gap wedges, because he's that's the scoring club. And Dave will teach you how to really hit that ball tight to the flag or how to chip so the ball rolls off and releases. And uh, that's the scoring club. Make no mistake about it. Um, 
The second shot or the third shot into the green is the shot that sets you up for the birdie. And you know, you need to hit the driver down the middle, but certainly uh, at some point you got to figure out how to get that ball close to the flag so you can be putting for birdies or at least pars. Another book that I really think that everyone should read and have in their uh, repertoire, and this is the only golf lesson you'll ever need. And this is by Hank Haney. Again, I, don't, I lost the cover on it. Uh, but Hank Haney is uh, Mark McCumber's coach, and he also was Tiger Woods' coach. And he is similar to um, Peter Costas with the style of swinging uh, more with your arms and letting your arms flow you around. Um, I'll show you another book here that is more of a body swinger uh, thing, but this is Hank Haney, and the only golf lesson you'll ever need. He tried to help um, Charles Barkley, if you did, you saw his show, and uh, Ray Ramon, you know, the guy on Everybody Loves Raymond, and um, he had that show that he would try to help these celebrities with their golf game. And he did. He did help them a lot. Another book, and this is Jimmy Ballard. Jimmy Ballard is a little bit more of a body swinger. And he talks about connection, where your arms and your body move in one piece. And Rocco Media and um, Hal Sutton, they were Jimmy Ballard disciples, and they both won on the tour. If you recall, a couple years ago, Rocco Media almost beat Tiger Woods. But this is another really good book for you to, let's say you have back problems and different things like that. Rocco Media, who is on the seniors tour, and he plays on the regular tour once in a while, he had some severe back problems, and Jimmy Ballard, How to Perfect Your Golf Swing, allowed Rocco to continue his golf career. Otherwise, he would have been done. And so he has a way of not putting all that pressure on your back. And I would highly recommend you, if you're trying to uh, continue your golf career, to take a look at that. Another book, uh, and this, is, this guy is one of the greatest speak teachers, I mean, in my mind, Probably the big four are uh, Butch Harmon, um, David Let It Better, this book here, of course, uh, Hank Haney, and there's others, uh, I'll remember them, but those guys are kind of, you know, the gurus. And so when you watch golf um, on TV and you'll see the, these coaches behind these pros, those are some of the guys, and Let Better is one of the big ones too. Ledbetter has taught many, many people. Um, this book is Faults and Fixes. This, you know, one of the star pupils of Ledbetter was Nick Faldo. And Nick Faldo won many, many tournaments. Um, so he is uh, someone that I'd highly recommend you uh, getting that book. Another book that is written by Nick Faldo, which I really loved, was Lessons from the Greats. And what this was is Ledbetter goes through every all these great pros, their swings. And like here's Freddie Couples. And, um, and he kind of breaks it down by, uh, you know, each part of the golf swing. And then he puts his recommendation in. Here's Hale Irwin. And, Butt and uh, Bernard Langer. And then what he does is he kind of tells them how, what you can take from their swing, and then maybe incorporates a little bit of his swing techniques into that also. Uh, this is a great book. I would highly recommend this book right here. Again, it's uh, David Ledbetter's Lessons from the Golf Greats. Uh, just a, a great book. Another great player uh, was Al Guyberger, and he was known as Mr. 59 because he shot the first uh, competitive uh, score on the golf course of 59. And what Al was known for was really his tempo. 
He had a, just this unbelievable one and two and hit. One and two and hit. And it was just phenomenal. And he got hurt too. And so he wasn't able to score as much as he wanted to, but he certainly um, you know, was a good player and, and you could learn a lot from um, his uh, thing. Now, here's another great book. And it's called How to Build a Classic Golf Swing by Ernie Els. Now, let's make no mistake about it. Ernie Els has and had the most beautiful golf swing on the tour ever. Very easy. They called him, him the Big Easy because he was so effortless with his swing. And he will show you how to swing the ball, the club, with, with ease, all natural, and um, really get your swing so it's not so herky-jerky and uh, fast. And he gives you all kinds of ideas on where uh, in the golf swing, if you're starting to have some problems, what to do to kind of slow it down and make it more effective. But Ernie Els, a great, great swinger of the club also. So, of course, another book you should have is Arnold Palmer. This is more of a coffee table book. This doesn't talk about his swing, because if you recall, Arnold Palmer, you know, you look at him here, he was kind of a rebel in his day. Look at him, he's smoking a cigarette, kind of neat. Um, you look at his golf swing and you would kind of go like, wow, how can you hit the ball that way? I mean, there's some wild stuff in here, but he talks about, um, you know, the game of golf and how you should play it and you know, what he was thinking about in his day and all of that kind of thing. He basically set all the golf pros up to make a lot of money. And what he did is he, of course, got in um, bed with Mark McCormick, who was a great agent, IMG, and they ended up selling Arnold Palmer celebrity status so he would actually sponsor, uh, Cadillac would sponsor Arnold, or uh, he had all kinds of different things, the, the tractors and different things. He was just a phenomenal guy, and it would be a great book for you to have in your library. So another guy that might relate to a lot of us is Nick um, Price. Nick Price has a very fast golf swing. He also was a David Ledbetter disciple. And what the neat thing about Nick Price is that if some of us had a fast swing, he, you look at his technique and you would be able to follow that. I mean, I actually have kind of a fast and a little shorter swing. Well, guess what? You can hit that ball just as far and win. I mean, he won many golf tournaments, majors also. And so, phenomenal book to be thinking about. Another book that I really liked is called Play Better Golf. And this book breaks down all the different kinds of swings. It talks about all the different pros and different things that they do better, but I like this swing book and it should really help you out. Another great book, and you should be able to find Golf Magazine's complete um, book of golf instruction. Now this book is has pointers from all over and it brings in some of the, the past years, you know, the vintage golf swings and what worked and what didn't, and why things changed, um, and now how to chip, you know. Just a great book. Again, Golf Magazine's Complete Book of Golf Instruction. Another book that was really hot, and it was the Square to Square Golf Swing. This book was very hot in the 60s, early 70s. Um, Dick Altman 
and they were kind of uh, bringing in sort of the vertical swing. If you look at this swing, you see that it's pretty vertical, but it was a repeatable swing. So it was a kind of a pendulum swing up and down. And again, you don't have to swing like, um, you know, Ernie Els or even Tiger Woods. You have your body makeup and you need to find that swing that works for you to, that's repeatable and to give you a little power. And so that's why you see all these different uh, golf instructors out there because they have learned that there is no one swing that you should try to emulate. You want to find that swing that works for you. This is a prime example. Uh, our buddy Ray Floyd had a really unorthodox swing and he was a champion. He's in the Hall of Fame and he wrote a book from 60 yards and he was a great short player. Ball, uh, you know, inside. And then here's another great book, Ken Venturi, The Venturi System. I love this book. He also was such a good player and he got hurt also, unfortunately. Another book I would recommend also is The Golf School. This is The Golf School book. It again brings you to the all facets of the game. It uh, talks about, it's a generic, it doesn't have any one golfer or pro that it's promoting. It promotes just the golf swing. What are the basics? What's, what's the basic swing? What's the setup? What have you. Another funny book, but it's also very relevant, is Gary McCord's book, Golf for Dummies. And Gary McCord, you know, is a commentator on, on television and he just brings in the basics. So if you're going to buy a book for a friend that's just starting golf, it could be kind of a humorous thing, but it also would be very relevant. I look at this book, Golf for Dummies, and this book you could probably buy for five dollars someplace on uh, Amazon. I definitely go to Amazon to look for your book. Another book that should be in your library is Chicken Soup for the golfer's soul. And you remember all the uh, chicken soup for the soul books by Canfield and uh, Mark Victor Hansen. This book is full of stories by many celebrities, golf stories, or prose about their life. For example, um, Jack Nicklaus has a story about his golf pro, Jack Grout, and he talks about how uh, Jack was his second father and helped him uh, so much. And then Jack Grout, in, when he died, in his will and testament, uh, had a, um, you know, a quote that about Jack and he had it read how Jack needed him, but uh, Jack had all the talent in the world. And Jack now, when um, he has his memorial tournament, 7.45 on Saturday, when he used to play, was when his friend died, and that's when he would have his tea off. And there's a lot of things in here like that. Certain stories, uh, one story is about Brad Brewer who went to see Arnie Palmer, and uh, he went and he asked, Arnie wasn't ready yet, and he asked Arnie's wife, where's his trophy room? Because Arnie won 92 times. And uh, she said, uh, no, he doesn't really have one. And then, so they were having dinner, and Brad Brewer asked uh, Arnie, where's your trophy room? How come you don't have one? And he said, you know what? That's yesterday's news. I never wanted to, you know, think about what I had done. I always wanted to think about what am I going to do tomorrow, which is kind of cool. Now, he said once in a while he would, um, you know, remember that, but he, that was his style. And those are the kinds of stories that are going to be in that book. Here's another neat book. It's called Kiss. You know, keep it simple, stupid, for golf. And another really, really good, more modern, and this brings up clubs, you know, what hybrids are, you know, the degrees, how far should you hit a nine iron if you're an average golfer, and, and how to set up, and the rules of golf. I mean, this book, I would highly recommend you getting somebody to 
start the game of golf with. And even your kids, you got a young kid or something that's starting the game, they'll learn a lot about the game and um, you know the benefits of uh, practice and sharpening your focus, the power of the mind. You know how if you can uh, will the ball to go, and a lot of the golfers have their uh, mental uh, exercises they do so that they play a good game of golf. And then another thing I'd recommend, and I've told you this before, this is a golf journal. I would highly recommend you having a golf journal where you have blank pages and you write down when you go hit balls at the lesson tee, how it went, what you tried, what worked. When you go to the golf course, then what you tried to, what kind of swing thoughts you had that day and what worked, and also who you played with, blah, blah, blah. But most pros have a, a golf journal notes. And that's how Henry Pennick put, built his little red book. He didn't put this book together until he was in his 80s, but he had all these little notes in a red book, in all his notebooks, and then he put them all together into this little book, and this book then talks about ball position, powder the ball. For example, he said some guys wanted to know where they're hitting the ball in the club face. He said you buy some talking powder, spray the ball or spray the club, and or baking powder, and then when you hit, you can see where you're hitting it on the club. Now they have smash tapes where you can tape them and different things, but um, this book is a result of having taking notes and everything. Uh, finally, there's a couple books. I mean, here's a book, Golf Nostalgia, Tips and Care, beautiful book. And then I really like this book. I use it all the time. Quotable Byron, Byron Nelson. He had so many great quotes. He was the gentleman uh, Byron, they called him, Lord Byron. And he had so many neat one-liners. Uh, and So anyway, I won't read any of these, but I highly recommend this too. So anyway, I hope uh, some of those books might uh, stimulate some interest. Uh, again, you buy them at Amazon. I'll have a link even. I'll put a link down where you can buy some of those books. So have a good day and um, uh, hit them straight.